So you're thinking about coming to Portugal? Well, you're in the right spot because we spent five weeks traveling throughout this incredible country. And in this video, we're gonna share everything you need to know to have the best trip ever. doing to us? I think I could live here. Portugal is amazing and it has so much to offer. From vibrant cities, delicious foods, interesting culture, beautiful beaches, and the nicest people, you'll have no problem falling in love with this place. Bienvenidos a Portugal. Portugal has three international airports, and most people arriving from North America will arrive to Lisbon. Although last time I checked, there's also direct flights from New York City to Porto. Either way, arriving to Portugal should be pretty easy. There are no visa requirements for either of us as a US and Venezuelan passport holders. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that Portugal is part of the Schengen group of European countries, which means that you cannot stay within these countries for more than 90 days in any 180 day period. And when it comes to COVID, as of September 21st, 2022, there are no special entry requirements, which means that you don't need to present a COVID test or your vaccination card. But still. Too very empty. See? No requirements. Now let's talk about our Portugal itinerary. We started in Lisbon, but we didn't really count that as our official start because we were here with my parents. Mm -hmm. So the unofficial start happened in Lisbon. And then we officially started in Porto, Porto, the beautiful historic city of Porto, where we tried delicious foods, drank delicious ports, just really enjoyed life in that city. From Porto, we picked up a car and drove northeast close to the border of Spain, and we visited Veneda Jerez National Park, the only national park in Portugal and also the surrounding villages. And it was beautiful and adorable. Then we drove to Douro Valley, Portugal's famous wine region, and we fell in love with that place. One of the most beautiful regions in all of Portugal. We didn't make videos, but it was still so beautiful. We'll tell you more in the highlights. You have to go there, just know that from now. And then from there, we returned the car in Porto and we went to Coimbra, a city that is often overlooked and it is extremely beautiful. We're also going to tell you more in the highlights later, but it is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. We love Coimbra. Then from Coimbra, we went on a four-night road trip along the Alentejo and also Algarve coast, which is incredible. Definitely recommended. Yeah. Like the cliffs and the virgin beaches are so beautiful. The towns we stopped in were Melides, Sagres, and Lagos. After the road trip, we hopped on a bus to Tavira, and it was love at first sight. Tavira, it is so beautiful, right? It's mm -hmm. incredible. And we're almost done staying with us. So then after Tavira, we went back north to Nazaré because it was big wave season and we really wanted to see the big waves. We couldn't pass on that opportunity. And after Nazaré, we ended our trip in Lisbon, in beautiful Lisboa, the capital of Portugal. And the city is filled with so much character. We fell in love with it and like the beautiful tiles and the hills, the trams, the waterfront. It is amazing here. We're going to tell you more about like more specific highlights and other places we like later in the video. But for now, let's continue with safety. Thankfully, we stay this after each travel series, but we have felt super safe here in Portugal and we are always out and about at night with our equipment and our cameras and we have never felt a danger. As a general rule though, you do have to be aware of your surroundings when you're in big cities, but this applies to any place in the world. But in general, Portugal is super safe to visit. Buses are a very easy and relatively affordable way to get around the most popular stops in all of Portugal. They're also generally cheaper and faster than trains. It's a great way to get around. The most popular companies are Flixbus, Alsa, and Rede Nacional. Whichever you choose, you can book any of them online. I'm going to put the links in the description for you guys. And the one that we can recommend is Flixbus because that's the one that we use the most.
We only rode the train twice while in Portugal, but the train system here is very well developed. You can get between all the major cities and even regional destinations. There's even a high speed train in Portugal. But the reason we kind of avoided it is that it's generally a little bit more expensive than bus travel. So when you come here, definitely compare the prices for train travel and bus travel before you go anywhere. And also a pro tip, make sure that you book ahead when you do any kind of intercity travel that is a requirement here in Portugal. Automatic cars are available, but there are much fewer options, which means you need to book in advance. And it also means that you're going to pay a premium. We pay 50 euros per day for both of our automatic cars. Also keep in mind to plan for tolls and gas when planning for your car rental budget. But even though it's a little bit pricey, we definitely think it's worth it. Renting a car in Portugal is a great way to get around this country. Pro tip, if you are driving in North Portugal, bring drama men. Uber is a great option for getting around the more popular places in Portugal, so like Lisbon, Porto, around the Algarve. Many places have Uber as an option to get around the cities, except for like smaller villages, you won't be able to find Uber there. We also noticed that it's cheaper to take Uber than taxis. We noticed that on the way from Lisbon airport into the city center. But even though taxis are generally more expensive, they're also a like decent option and they run by the meter. So you don't have to like negotiate prices, but still we prefer Uber. When it comes to moving around in the actual cities, the ones we visited were more or less compact, so we pretty much like walk everywhere. Just keep in mind that cities like Lisbon and Porto are kind of hilly, and the sidewalks are uneven, but the public transportation system is great. They have buses, trains, and of course, the iconic trams. The currency in Portugal is the euro, and during the time of our visit in October 2022, it was almost exactly the same value as the US dollar, so it was very easy to do the math. Credit cards are widely accepted in Portugal, oftentimes even for smaller transactions, but just make sure that you bring a Visa or a MasterCard. The American Express will not get you very far. And also, if a place doesn't accept credit card, which will happen, it'll say something along the lines of, now them multibanco, which basically means we don't have the multibank system, so no credit cards. And when it comes to tipping, it's important to know that Portugal doesn't really have a tipping culture. It's similar to the rest of like Western Europe, where it's more of like a roundup system. So if a taxi is like 750, you round up to eight. If at a cafe, it's like 275, you round up to three. But if you're going to a nicer restaurant, then a tip of like five to 10% is appreciated. Learning about tipping is my favorite thing. And also, this is an aside, sometimes the hours of like restaurants are wrong on Google and a lot of like local restaurants close between the hours of like three and seven. So even though you can get very far in Portugal with just your credit card, there will be times when you're going to need cash. This is especially true in more like remote communities and also at very small businesses. Luckily, there are ATMs all over the country where you can easily withdraw cash. We have this Charles Schwab International Debit Card where there are no international withdrawal fees and we can highly recommend it. Now we are going to share how much we spent during our five weeks in Portugal and we're going to cover accommodation, transportation, activities and food. Ready? I'm ready. We're going to start with accommodation. So we averaged $68 a night for perspective. The most expensive one was $98 a night in Tavira and the cheapest one was $39 a night in Nazaret. These were not like five star Airbnbs and we also stay in some guest houses, but they were fine. They were comfortable, yeah. they were clean, which is like very important to us. In general, this is more than we're used to paying, but still averaging $68 a night is not that bad. So there's plenty of options. Accommodation is it's relatively affordable here in Portugal. Next up, we're looking at our expenses for food. So groceries versus restaurants. And we have to start by saying that we were very pleasantly surprised by how affordable yeah. and delicious food is here in Portugal. And big shout out to Pingo Doce, which is the supermarket chain here in Portugal for their incredible savings. Mega Fansas, that's the word for savings. We're very appreciative of them. We spent like $420 in groceries during our time here. We cooked a lot for ourselves. Yeah. And that really helped keep our budget mm -hmm. down. And then we spent about $700 at restaurants. So obviously a little bit more than grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, but for context, if you eat like breakfast at a local place, it's never going to be more than like eight, eight euros. euros. Yeah, yes. for like two coffees, like croissants, like little like empanadas yep. with chicken, very delicious stuff. Yep. 
And then for dinner, we never really pay more than 40 euros, and that includes like house wine, mm -hmm. house appetizers. House wine is very affordable, yeah. so it's always great to order wine. Yeah, it's cheaper than water. Order wine whenever you can. Yeah, so it wasn't. It was never more than 40 euros. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so that's pretty pretty good deal, and the food is delicious. Pupanzas everywhere. Pupanzas, pupanzas. And for transportation budget, we have to divide it into car rentals, buses, trains, and taxis. So for car rentals, we rented cars twice and we paid 50 euros per day for automatic cars. We didn't really have a choice because we can't drive a stick. So if you can't drive a stick, you do have to pay a little bit more. And this doesn't include gas and tolls, but I'm going to put that here so you guys can like visualize it better. For taxis or Ubers, we took 14 taxis and Ubers. It was mostly Ubers because it is a lot cheaper than taxis. And they average about 9 euros. For perspective, the most expensive one was 17, 17 euros from the Lisbon Airport to Airbnb. And that was a taxi. Your parents paid 10 mm -hmm. with an Uber. And then the cheapest one was 4 euros. And in general, Ubers are like very convenient and very affordable. And intercity buses are also affordable. We used the bus like six times to get to our different like destinations and we never paid more than 24 euros per person. And the cheapest one was like five euros. So the expensive one does sound kind of expensive, but it was a very like convoluted route from like yeah. Goiva to Farda when it took like seven hours. But in general, very affordable. And the train also is typically more expensive than the bus, but for the two times that we used it, we never paid more than like five and a half euros per yeah. person. And that was just in the Algarve to get from Tavida to Abu Fuera. It was a short months. route. Yeah. A short route. Yeah. But it's still affordable. And last but not least are our expenses for activities. And we also kept our activity budget very low and only spent a total of $160. And this includes photo nights here in Lisbon, a couple of museums, mm -hmm. a couple of entrance fees for like churches, churches yeah. and also like a port tasting in beautiful Porto. And the activities in general, they seem like pretty affordable and also like you don't have to do a lot of activities like in Portugal yeah. it's just like a historic country and like beautiful nature so you can just like walk around and enjoy the one thing we did do is like avoid some of the things like the historic like lift here in uh, yeah. Lisbon which is like six dollars to go up a lift when you get like the same view by just like taking the stairs so <laughs> yeah. there's ways around like certain things so it's definitely easy to keep your activities budget very low but obviously that's like a personal thing exactly so Summary, Portugal can be very affordable. And there are options for everyone, pretty much. We'd like to include this question in our videos because people always ask and we think for Portugal the answer is no. Like, of course, like some touristy things are going to be more expensive because of the area that they're in or the city that they're in, but we never felt like we were overcharged, right? Yeah, not at all. I actually can't think of like one single time yeah. where we were like overcharged. Like it's always like very transparent with like the pricing and like the restaurants or like activities. Yeah. I think Portuguese are just like too polite and honest to like <laughs> overcharge tourists. Yeah, so. I know. Yeah, everything is there. You see the prices in advance and then you decide if you pay for it or not. So yeah. if it's like too expensive, then you just don't pay for it. But you know, there are no surprises. Mm. And that was very nice. My name is Aymara and I'm Gordon and we are Ways of the World. We're a slow traveling couple who love to spend longer periods of time in countries so we can learn more and connect with the people, learn about the culture and just go to places that a lot of people don't go to. So our journey started in September 2021 when we spent three months in Turkey. Then we went to Mexico for two and a half months exploring the Yucatan Peninsula. Then we went back across the Atlantic Ocean and spent two and a half months in Albania. From there we spent five weeks in Romania. And we just spent five weeks in beautiful Portugal, and these were some of our highlights and our favorite places. So Portugal highlights. This is very hard after five weeks of visiting incredible places here in Portugal, but we wanted to make this like kind of like useful for you. So if we had to pick five. We made a list. If you ask me tomorrow, the list would probably be different. But the <laughs> list starts with Nazare, the town of like, the beautiful like waves and just like raw nature, the mm -hmm. surf town. We love that spot, like also because they had like the folksy element to it with like the mm -hmm. women in traditional clothing. Yeah. Very cool. Nazare at number one. Next is Duoro Valley, the wine region. It's just beautiful. The wine is delicious. It just felt like, I don't know, like a different like world. We are home. totally going back there like uh -huh. for an anniversary or something because that place is so romantic and mm -hmm. beautiful. We didn't make videos, but like trust us, you have to go there. 
Dordo Valley at number two. Then we have Tavira, the town that I might have mentioned stole our heart at the moment we entered. It's very just like cute and adorable and just like, easy to like walk around and enjoy you can go beautiful to the beach beaches. And eat it outside. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. And then Porto. Porto at number four. Porto is also a very easy city to enjoy. Like the yeah. Duardo River like runs through and there's like restaurants and like port tasting on like each side and you can just like mm -hmm. chill. There's not like a million sites where you're like overwhelmed with the amount of things you have to do. You can just yeah. like go and eat. Food just like yeah. And enjoy. Yeah, it's very nice. And then Number five is Peneda Jerez, the national park. And that's just like a beautiful spot. Like it's just like you connect kind of with like the village life in yeah. Portugal. We definitely recommend it. So it's those very are peaceful. very They're peaceful. Very peaceful. And I have to add a couple things to that list. And one of them is the Alentejo coast because it was so beautiful, so raw, like the cliffs and the fog and the waves. It was just so pretty and also really peaceful. And of course Lisbon, but like we were like, okay, should we put Lisbon at the top five? Maybe not, you're probably going to land here, you're going to come to Lisbon anyways. Just know that you have to spend time here because Lisbon is incredible. Portuguese food is incredible. We always appreciate when we visit a country and they take food seriously. It makes the entire experience so much better. Talking about Portuguese food, we're going to start with breakfast. Breakfast is taken also very seriously, but it's usually pretty simple. Don't forget to try the brioche croissants, the famous pastel de nata and different fried treats like the cozinha and also the empadas de frango were one of our favorites. And it always comes with a goloin or you can order dois galois, which is one of our favorite things to say in Portuguese. It means to galão. It's not easy to summarize Portuguese foods, but generally speaking, like the emphasis is on high quality meats and fish and they're seasoned like very simply with like salt and olive oil. In some cases they use like wine sauces. They also have a lot of soups and bean stews and stuff that can be like more hearty, like maybe more winter foods. They also have a lot of fried treats, bread, delicious bread that is often eaten with butter. And we can't forget to mention the cut dishes because they're everywhere. It's impossible not to see it. They're in every restaurant, at the supermarkets, everywhere. But we don't really eat fish because we watched the conspiracy, so we didn't try any of them. But we did make videos about food in Lisbon where we try like African Portuguese foods and other videos where we try the famous francesinha and pastel de nata. So I'm gonna link those in the description. This one is very tricky because honestly, there weren't many things that we didn't like about Portugal. This is a very pleasant country to travel in. However, if we had to pick one thing, it would be that some people do not pick up their dog's poop from the asylum. So you have to walk carefully in some places, but that was kind of gross. It's everywhere. Let's talk about language. The language in Portugal is Portuguese and for us it was kind of easy to get around because we both speak Spanish and we have a lot of similar words. But in general, anyone you talk to in the tourism or hospitality industry, they're going to speak really good English so you're not going to have any issues communicating. And if you only speak Spanish because we have so many similar words, like you will be understood, like communication doesn't seem to be like that hard. However, we see it as a sign of respect that whenever you're visiting a new country, you try to learn a few words in advance. It is you that's visiting in their country after all so it's always important to like show respect and this is always like a great interaction with locals they really like it when you try and here in Portugal people are super super polite so it is really important to learn these words whenever you're like entering like a restaurant or a store or anything are you ready for some Portuguese lessons are you ready I'm ready no cheating mm. <laughs> Believe it or not, his pronunciation is way better than mine because I pronounce everything like in Spanish, but he sounds Portuguese. It's good. I think. We think. We think. <laughs> good morning. Bom dia. Good afternoon. Boa tarde. Hello. Hola. How are you? Como vai você? Thank you. Obrigado. If you're a man, obrigada. If you're a woman. You're welcome. De nada. Please. Por favor. All good. Tudo bem. Very good. Muito bom. And that's what you would say if like a meal is very good. Important to learn. Yes. Hopefully you get to say that a lot. Yes. Sim. No. Now. That's my favorite word. Now. <laughs> the good ones. Chicken. Frango. And how many languages do you know how to say chicken? Uh, 17. <laughs> Kip, chicken, fui, frango, pollo. Pule. Mm, that's it. Tabuk. <laughs> Tabuk. <laughs> he forgot his Turkish already. Bread. Pão. 
Prosciutto. Prosciutto. Cheese. Queijo. Wine. Vinho. Beer. Cerveja. Water. Agua. Coffee. Café or cafezinho. You have to say cafezinho. Yeah, cafezinho. And the coffee that we like? Portuguese coffee, galão. Galão. Dois que dois. <laughs> dois que dois. Just two, two coffees. Two galão. Two galão. Goodbye. Adios. The cutest goodbye that you have to learn and use it everywhere. I guarantee a smile and a big wave. And like a menina or something cute. Tchauzinho. Tchauzinho is like, doi doi. <laughs> That's done. Bye bye. It's like bye bye. Tchauzinho. You, you can say ciao. You can say ciao, but like, or adios. 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 But tchauzinho. Adorable. Is the cutest. People really love the Chelsea. When you say Chelsea, they really, really like it. And just so you know, there is a link in the description where you can download a PDF that has all these words and a lot of like useful tips and links about Portugal. And it's all in like a cute one page printable PDF. It's in the description. It's very cute. Thank you. Well, Portugal, this is goodbye. It's time for us to leave. This was very special. I know we always say this, but we really fell in love with this country. Like, I literally cried last night to each other. It's true. It's just like a very easy country to fall in love with. Like the people are super nice. Like the places are beautiful, like incredible. And the food is delicious. Hopefully we come back. We have to come back to Nazaré for big wave season. That's exactly. our main excuse. Exactly. I know we're coming back, but for now I'm just like filled with like, so that. <laughs> so that. And if you guys enjoy this travel series, please make sure to check out our other travel series. So far, we have been to Turkey, Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, Albania, and Romania. And what is next for us? In a couple of hours, we are going to get on two buses and a long train for a 24-hour journey to Paris, France, the grand finale of our trip throughout Europe. It is going to be crazy. I know we're crazy, but we try not to fly much. So we're going to spend five nights in Paris, and then we're going to fly back home to spend time with our friends and family. We're gonna travel a little bit throughout the US, so we're gonna show you a couple of US videos. And we'll be back on the road in January, right? That's it, that's what's next. Yep, so we are- <laughs> much happening. Yeah, we are gonna share videos of our journey, so stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We're always happy to help. And remember, there's a PDF in the description with all the details about Portugal. Thank you for watching. Obrigado. Obrigado, Portugal.